Hi, this is Eric Sieber from White Birch Enterprise. On this video, I'm going to show how to establish a baseline schedule. So what we have here is a seven task schedule, critical path, going from designing the home all the way through to certificate of occupancy. The current view that we have is the Gantt view. And what we're going to do is go and take a look at the tracking Gantt view. As you can see right here, we're going to kind of shrink this and shrink that. I'm going to make it a little bit better to understand these things. What you see here is the I'll blow that up a little bit. The steps to go from the design all the way to the certificate of occupancy. You'll notice right here that the get the permit is concurrent with ordering the materials. The order materials is five days longer, so therefore there is some slack or float that I'd like to use in the permit process without affecting the completion date of the project. I do not like the looks of this tracking Gantt, so I'm going to make my own. And the way we do that is go to View, go to More Views, go to Tracking Gant, Gantt, and then copy it. And leave all these the same. Say, then we're going to rename it. I'm going to rename it Tracking Gantt so that I can always remember it, similar to the other ones. And then just give it my initials and give it the number one. The, later on, if I want to rename it, it's easy to do that under using the organizer function. So we say OK. So apply. So here, what I want to do is now I want to actually make the revisions to that. So a couple of things that I want to do. I want to change the bar. I want to add in a baseline. I want to make the right side, instead of being a percent complete, I want to show that as how much float is available. So as an example, we're going to go, and there's two parts. We're, we're adjusting the right side, and we're also going to adjust the left side of things that are available to see. So a um, couple of things you'll notice is uh, if we go and go to Format, Bar Styles, we're going to go and we're going to take the critical. I don't mind that style, but I don't like the looks of it. I want to make it lighter inside. Do the same thing with the Task Bar. Instead of being solid, I want to make it light. That way when we update it, it shows um, the progress easier to see. The other thing we're going to do while we're at this is the percent complete. I noticed it, I didn't want that. We're going to put in total slack or total float. I'm going to do the same thing with the critical. I'm going to highlight that. We're going to go to I started typing in TOT and it jumps to the one that's there. And we'll say OK. All right, so kind of changed the look a little bit. The other thing we're going to do right now is we don't have um, the baseline established. So we're going to right left click, right click, insert a column, start typing in BA, so that gives us the baseline. We want the baseline start, say OK, and then same thing. Oh. We're going to insert a column. Baseline, now we want the baseline finish right there. And say OK. So there's nothing filled in right now. Um, the reason there's nothing filled in is we haven't set the baseline. Right here, the schedule is established as to what ideally we want to do. So what we're going to do is going to go to Tools, Tracking, Set Baseline. And here we are setting the baseline just to show you all the different things. Later on, you're going to see baseline 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to track progress, but to set the initial baseline, that's what we want to do. Interim is the same as base, interim plans are the same as baselines 1 through 10. Gives you another 10 um, interim plans to track. Uh, they don't carry as much data, but for most people you'll never notice the difference. So I'm going to say OK to this, and guess what? It started getting filled up. If I double click this with my left button, it, gives, it opens up the columns enough so that we can see the dates. So right now we have 
the baseline start, the baseline finish. And I, by the way, I had renamed these. They were called start and finish. I call these estimated start and estimated finish just because those are constantly changing. The way you do that is you just double click right there and here under the title it will be start but unless you rename it if it's blank it'll just become start the field name well, just to give you an idea I'll make that blank say okay so you made start I don't want that I wanted to make sure that people understand that's estimated start if you've already have an actual it's more than estimated it's actual start it combines with actual start this become blue because they just show that it's something different than before. If you hit save, bingo, it now updates those. The other thing we need to do is um, we need to add the actual starts and the actual finishes. So while we're at this, we're going to go and insert another column and we'll hit the A. Look at that, and it jumps you right to the actuals and the actual start. Say OK. Right here. Insert a column, hit A, and then guess what? We're on actual finish. Say OK. All right, so now we have the actual starts and the actual finish. They just haven't been filled out yet. Um, we're going to make this a little bit smaller so that I want to work on this. See the looks of that? That's the next thing I want to revise. So I'm going to go back to the format, the bars. I don't like the looks of that. Um, and you'll see why when, when you start updating from month to month, these uh, actual bit, the baselines can be a little overbearing. So we're going to go to bar style, and we're going to go down to baseline right here. And I'm going to use, because it's going to be in row 1, I'm going to use it, put it at the bottom of row 1. I'm going to make it a solid line right there, and I'm going to keep it black. So I'm going to say OK. And bingo. A little bit more, less imposing, kind of showing it, but not dominating. The, you know, I want the actual schedule would be the dominant, the baselines to be kind of a, a secondary bit of information. Um, you could also go and uh, format bar styles and go down to um, baseline instead of black just to even make it a little less imposing you can go to gray. So it's a little bit less, still noticeable but not so dominant. So here we go. So now we have an ability to start tracking our progress. So a lot of people don't do this, but the way you're supposed to track progress is as the dates of the activities occur, you are actually supposed to input those dates. So the baseline start, I'm going to move this over a little bit so we can kind of see the baseline. These are when they were supposed to start and, spo and supposed to finish. What, we're, what we've done is we're going to say that it actually started a day. The, the day was supposed to start, so that was good news. But the finish, instead of finishing on, by the way, notice it's not filling out. Double click it, and we we'll see that there. The day it was supposed to finish was on the 22nd of February, and we actually had it finish a week later. So it finished on 3-1. 2012. Okay. So what you notice is that change right there changed everything after that because it's a critical path and when something changes on a critical path, everything after that it, that's tied into it has a ch it changed also. So visually now, you can see it right here. It was supposed to finish right there was your baseline. That's where it was supposed to end and right now we know it finished actually right there. I'm going to show another little trick that I do because notice the float, the total float hasn't changed even though the project now has slipped. Our total float hasn't changed. That's because the schedule, instead of being completed on, I'll show you at the bottom, originally we were supposed to finish on 1017. Because of the slippage, it's now finishing on 1025. So, but the float, so therefore the float hasn't changed at all. The way you can do that, there's a couple of ways to do that. The way I like to do it is I'll double click that, open up the certificate of occupancy. In the advanced tab, you can say must finish on, and you put the date of 1017. 10 17 12. And you say OK. It's going to give you, it's going to say, tell you to cancel. It doesn't like doing this. 
you have to just hit continue and it says a must finish on constraint will be set then it also says it will cause a scheduling conflict um, and, and you just ignore that also now sometimes you, you have to understand when you first setting it up ignore them but eventually say okay so what happens is if you notice up here I'm going to make this a little bit smaller dragging it with my left mouse button which makes this uh, the ability to go a little bit bigger the next task up because the only one that's finished so far the next task up is minus six days so there's six days from where there to there that has slipped so it's showing you and I like to do that it's showing you that in order to get back on track somewhere along this project you have to save six days it could be two here two there two there you could lose another two but save another eight so um, just to go now when we were updating this we weren't really done updating it but I just wanted to show you that let me just show you at the end of that too let's just show you at the end of the schedule see right here the project is finishing after the milestone of certificate of occupancy so in order to finish it on 1017 you have to bring it back six working days not six calendar days these are all based on calendar days which is a five-day week calendar okay so we aren't finished updating this so we're going to go the bidding, bidding the home, um, go to general. It started on the actual start, which is easier to me. I actually like inputting. Let me cancel out of that. I like inputting into here better. So we go 3-2, 2012. Okay. And then I haven't completed it yet, though. So I'm going to open that up as a percentage complete, we're 30% complete. So it started on 312, expected to finish on 329. Okay. So now you see how that's solid? That's showing you as a, it's a percent complete. And you can put your cursor over that and it'll show you that's 30% complete, completed through 39, and going to finish on, if you go over here, I'll show you the date. Yeah, that's right, it's too small the screen. The way you really want to do is some of these dates are to look at right here. You have the baseline on this activity. Sorry, my mouse is happy mouse. The estimated start is just kind of updating from where we are. We started on 3-2-2012, and the baseline start was supposed to be 2-23, so we're behind schedule. It's supposed to finish on 321, and right now it's estimated to finish on 329. So in order to pull that back and finish on time, we would need to save six working days somehow. So let's go. And once again, some people like to look at this. We have the baseline start, the baseline finish. Some people like to be visual and kind of see. Let's like pull this back over. And you have that's why you need a big monitor and a big screen. Um, you can see a lot more real estate. So right here, you can see right here that everything has been pushed further to the right, and you have a problem of minus six days. Right here, we have minus one day, and that's because this activity is concurrent. Getting the permit is concurrent with ordering materials, and therefore the two of them. Um, are being concurrent, the one that is critical is the longer of the two, and which is ordering materials. And that's it. Um, the next video is really the one that uh, project managers um, definitely don't follow. Um, a lot of them don't follow using the actual starts here and the actual finishes. They use the estimated starts and the estimated finishes to fill in actuals, which is not the proper way to do things. They need to be using tracking Gantt setting up their own style if they want. Um, pretty easy to do. I appreciate it. Um, remember, Eric Sieber, White Birch Enterprise. Talk to you soon.